Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another day of quarterfinals of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020. This time I would like to show you the game of Daniel Dubov. Daniel Dubov uh, is uh, known as a very, very creative and attacking player. He's ranking 2770. Uh, he is number 12 in the world in rapid time control and he's gonna play as white. Uh, and his opponent, Sergei Karyakin. He's ranking 2790. Nine, that means he's 33rd in the world and he's gonna play as black. However, uh, just to let you know, Sergei Karyakin, after the first round of the tournament, after round robin, uh, he was, uh, you know, number two in the, in the whole tournament, just half point behind Hikaru Nakamura. So really well played uh, tournament by Sergei uh, and Daniel Dubov, after day two, he was not even sure if he gonna qualify, but in the last day he won against Magnus Carlsen uh, and he just managed to qualify. So very interesting um, game. So let's see what just happened on the board. Uh, Daniel Dubov, this is game number three and Daniel Dubov opens with D4. We have knight on F6, C4 and D6, old Indian defense. And now Dubov plays knight on F3. We have G6, knight on C3. Uh, and bishop on g7 would be the most popular obvious move for uh, for this defense however we have bishop on f5 different line which is not really great especially um, against daniel dubov and i will explain just in the moment why uh, we have e3 bishop on g7 and now bishop on d3 uh, and asking K sergey karyakin what you gonna do with this bishop uh, because if you don't want to exchange uh, which is the best move and the most popular move in this position, just to exchange light square bishop, then what are you going to play? Bishop on g4? Uh, after h3, you have to exchange for the knight. Uh, are you sure it's good for you? So, Sergei in this position play bishop on c8, retreating completely. Uh, and after castle, castle, Dubov play e4. And funny thing is, this position was actually reached against Magnus Carlsen, just a couple of weeks ago in Steinitz Memorial and uh, Daniel Dubov just outplay Magnus. He shown, you know, how to play that. Uh, and, uh, and, and funny thing that Magnus in this position play Bishop on G4. Okay, G Bishop on G4, then Knight on D7 and E5. That was his plan for the game. So Sergei goes for some different idea. At least he told that's gonna be different idea. Knight on C6 uh, and after D5, Knight B4 with the idea not E5, but, but rather c5 and then undermine the center with the move like e6. So this was his, his idea. Of course, the bishop is under attack. So we have bishop on e2 and now c5. Uh, bishop on f4 developing by Daniel Dubov. And now bishop g4. So this bishop uh, has nothing to do uh, on c8. So bishop on g4 uh, anyway. And after h3, just exchanging for the knight. We have bishop on f3, knight d7, and now bishop on e2. Uh, knight on a6, we have queen on d2, now uh, making this battery, uh, threatening to exchange the dark square bishop as well, but this bishop is too precious, so we have rook on e8. And now if bishop on h6, then the bishop, uh, black bishop can just retreat to h8. Uh, so Dubov play bishop on e3, and now we have knight on c7. Uh, rook a on d1 and now rook b8 preparing move like b5 it's not possible yet to play that move uh, but after g3 a6 now it would be possible because uh, b5 is controlled three times now by black as well uh, so Dubov plays against that of course so we have a4 now b5 is not possible and now e6 undermining the center uh, king on g2 so improving the position of the king e takes on d5 e takes on d5 and now knight on a8 and what is this move actually 
uh, the idea behind this move is making a space for the queen to move to b6 and attack on the queen side. So that's the idea. Uh, this is not the idea to, you know, the move the, the, the knight. That doesn't make any sense in this position. Uh, but you will see. b3, queen on b6, attacking the, the pawn on b3. So we have queen on c2. Uh, and here Karyakin sacrificed the exchange. He see that he cannot go through uh, Dubov's defense here, as Dubov just, just you know, uh, is very patiently waiting uh, what Karyakin gonna do. So uh, Rook on e3, and the idea is uh, to improve the position of the pieces by eliminating the dark square bishop. And you will see uh, what is this idea. It's quite quite deep. So f takes on e3, uh, and now we have the weakness on e3. So Dubov has to do something about that. We have queen on d8, and now rook on f2. Queen on e7, attacking the pawn, rook d on f1. And now asking Karyakin, do you want to take this pawn? Because then I'm gonna take the pawn on f7. So we have rook on f8 first. But now queen on d2 defending, a bishop on h6 now attacking it twice and also pinning so the pawn cannot be moved but knight on d1 still defending. And knight on e5 and what Sergei achieved here actually he brought the knight to a super position, super outpost for the knight. Knight cannot be attacked by the pawns and can be only attacked by the knight. So that's the main idea of Daniel now, just eliminate this knight. Uh, but first, a5, locking the queen side. And now any moves like b5 always will be met with the end pass sound taking on b6. Uh, so now we have knight on c7, the only piece which is not developed yet, and it's still far, far away. So the plan is to move it to c7 uh, and then very easy plan to uh, actually reinforce the knight on e5. Uh, we have knight on b2, who's gonna be first to the knight, uh, knight on e8, and now knight on d3, attacking the knight already. So bishop on g7 now, and now exchanging the knights, bishop on e5, and pushing e4. Knight on f6, now attacking the, the pawn on e4, so bishop on d3 defending, and now knight d7 as planned. Bishop on c2 and bishop on d4 attacking the rook, so we have rook on f4, bishop retreats to g7, rook from the fourth rank to f2, uh, and now knight e5. So this knight now cannot be attacked and also uh, he take a look on f7, defending f7. So. Uh, yes, Daniel Dubov has these double rooks, but they cannot do anything on f7 as it is guarded very, very well by the by the knight on e5, which cannot be, you know, uh, taken out. So it's pretty nice position for, for Sergei. However, what is the problem in this game? The first game uh, in this mini match was won by Dubov. Uh, and the second game, uh, Dubov also got the better position and Sergei lost connection. Uh, very strange, when he came back, uh, he thought he just lost, uh, but the referee told him to continue the game and he actually lost by time, I think. Uh, and that was because that was only 20 moves or so. Uh, and this was third game. So 2-0 already and Sergei has to win. And he is playing as black, as you see. So uh, he should definitely try very hard to win that. But as you see, it's not really easy. He even sacrificed the exchange. Uh, he has very nice defending position, but how to win this game? Uh, this is the problem. We have queen on e2 by Daniel Dubov and now h5. Uh, queen on d2 uh, and now king h7 supporting h6. Bishop on d1, now bishop h6 kicking the queen. Queen on c3, bishop goes back to g7, now... Uh, some discoveries are possible. So we have a uh, queen on d2. Uh, and now, yeah, black can, of course, uh, draw, but this, this doesn't work for Sergei. Uh, so we have rook on c8, maybe trying to attack on the queen side. We have bishop on c2, rook on c7 now, queen on e1. And here, actually, uh, Sergei Karyakin has 3 minutes 40 seconds on his clock, and Daniel Dubov is still 5.5 minutes. So, uh, 
Sergei decided to make, I think, the worst king walk in the chess history. But I think he just wanted to win, you know, a couple of seconds um, to think about the position and how he can crack White's position. So we, he, we have king on g8, queen on d2, and now king on f8, bishop on d1, king on e8, uh, bishop on c2, uh, king on d8, bishop on b1, king on c8, bishop on c2, king on b8, bishop on b1, king on a7, bishop on c2, and now king goes back to b8. Uh, and here bishop on b1. Uh, so what black tries to do maybe to uh, relocate the king to the queen side and start to attack on the king side. So now we have rook on c8, now moving all the pieces to the king side, bishop on c2, rook on h8, bishop on b1, uh, bishop on h6 attacking the queen, so queen on c3, rook on h7, bishop on c2, uh, bishop on g5, bishop on b1, queen on f8, and now maybe preparing some moves of the pawns, but how to do? There are three pawns against these two pawns, but these two rooks on the semi-open file, uh, they are really strong. And this pawn on e4 is not so weak uh, as we thought it's gonna be weak, because it's actually control f5. So uh, how to proceed? We have bishop on c2. Daniel Dubov doesn't care about that. He just, you know, needs a draw. Uh, we have queen on e8, bishop on b1, queen on d7 now, bishop on c2, rook on g7, bishop on d1, rook on g8 now. Uh, and Dubov, if he needs to win, probably he would go for something like rook on b2 uh, and then continue this way. For example, uh, b4, c takes on b4 and then try to attack the king's position. However, he is really not interested in risking and he just play bishop on c2. Uh, we have rook on e8 and now bishop on b1. Rook on e7, bishop on c2 and here Sergei told, okay, uh, attack on the king side is impossible to do. So uh, let's do the return of the king. So uh, he started another king walk. We have king on c8, bishop on b1, king on d8, bishop on c2, king on e8, bishop on b1, king on f8, bishop on c2, king on g8, and now bishop on b1. Uh, rook on e8, so remaneuvering the pieces to the queen side now, bishop on c2, rook on b8, preparing a uh, move like b5, we have bishop on d1 now, uh, bishop on h6 now um, optimizing the position of all pieces before he strikes, we have bishop on c2, bishop on g7, queen on d2, moving from this um, from this nasty discovery maybe this way with with the attack on the on the rook uh, and now b5 so it begins we have a takes on b6 rook takes on b6 bishop on d1 and now queen b7 so preparing to sacrifice the rook and there is no other way uh, to proceed uh, with this passed pawn maybe that would be some chance the problem is Daniel Dubov in this moment counterattack and he has queen on g5. Queen on g5 threatening queen on d8 uh, and from there he can attack for example d6. So uh, very dangerous. So we have queen on c7 because if d6 is fall, you know, uh, white gonna have the protected pass pawn and central pass pawn uh, could be very dangerous here. Uh, we have g4 now. So now Daniel Dubov, you know, attacking the position of black king. H takes on g4 and now bishop on g4. And here Magnus Carlsen in studio actually, because he finished uh, his match very early um, after Wesley so uh, just draw in the third game. And Magnus said about Daniel Dubov, he shows more talent than the position requires. So he thinks in this position is so unnecessary, you know, <laughs> to play uh, such a great moves. Uh, and what is the problem? Now, if the rook takes on b3, because it's not protected now. The problem is rook on f7. And after knight on f7, bishop e6, pinning the knight. Uh, and now 
threatening to actually win that. Uh, and what black can play only, that's gonna be a checkmate pretty soon, followed by g6 and, and checkmate. So what black can play only is rook on b2, king h1, and now sacrificing this rook. That is the only way. And after rook on b1, uh, king h7 and pinning, but then bishop f7, queen f7, uh, and this is winning position for white with the exchange extra uh, and totally better position of the pieces. So uh, definitely uh, it's a huge risk. King h7 is actually recommended by the engine. The problem is after h4, there are no good moves here. It's very difficult to find a good move here. Even f6 doesn't work because white actually can uh, give the exchange back and play rook on f6 and this is so strong attack bishop takes on f6 rook takes on f6 and now if rook on b3 uh, bishop f5 and now the bishop cannot be taken because checkmate on h6 that's the first problem so queen on g7 also the checks doesn't work because king gonna simply uh, come to the rook so the only way is queen on g7, but it still doesn't work. Queen h5 with check. And now the pawn cannot take the queen because of the, of the pin. Queen h6, but now bishop g6. And whatever black plays is just losing. Okay, knight on g6, rook f7, and the queen is lost. Okay, king g8, uh, king f7, and this is winning for white as well. So doesn't work this way. And even if king on g7 is played, still queen h6 is the simplest way. Uh, king h6 and now bishop e8 with check. King g7, rook d6, winning this pawn, uh, making the passed pawn in the center and uh, attacking the passed pawn of black, the only chance. Uh, so yes, can exchange the, the, the passed pawns, uh, but white still gonna have the passed pawn. Uh, and if the pawn is moved, then actually bishop b5 and black has no way, you know, to, to progress here. And white with extra two pawns definitely gonna easily win the game. So uh, really, really great move, bishop on g4. This is why Magnus say he shows more talent than the position requires. So we have rook on b7 by Karyakin, so bringing the rook to defense on the 7 rank, uh, but now simply as planned, rook on f7, uh, knight on f7 and bishop on e6. Uh, and here queen on b8, so moving the queen to the 8th rank just to bring it to e8 because uh, the knight gonna be attacked again. Uh, and if queen defends uh, from, you know, this, this, this battery with the queen on the front is not really great because, you know, rook in this position should be first. Uh, otherwise, black gonna lose the queen and the game. So we have queen on g6, queen on e8, and now e5. e5 as the both minor pieces are pinned. Okay, so these are double pin. Uh, so we have d takes on e5. The problem is now white gets this passed pawn. And if you think it's not dangerous, then look at this d6 and what black can play. We have king on f8 and pinning the bishop, but as you see, the knight is still pinned. Uh, queen on f5 and now queen on c6 attacking the king and the pawn. So it looks like a good move. The problem is after bishop on d5, black actually cannot take the pawn because if pawn is taken, actually, what would you play as white? Try to find uh, the, the answer why this pawn cannot be taken. And I think you found it queen c8 and that is the checkmate in two moves. So uh, that's not possible. This is why Karyakin play queen on d7, but it doesn't help. And actually Dubov has many ways to, to win this position. Uh, bishop on b7 is the most obvious with the queen on b7 with check, moving the king and then just, you know, progress with the pawn and, and win the game. That's the one option. Uh, queen on g6 would be very interesting because now 
rook on f7 is coming and nothing can be done here so for example e4 rook f7 queen on f7 uh, bishop f7 and now after rook on f7 it's also winning for white so this was also possible however dubov is quite creative and he found other way so he played bishop on f7 uh, and now we have queen on f5 solving the problems of black however not really because after rook on f5 and now the problem is that sergey cannot take the bishop he cannot the bishop it looks like okay i'm winning but this pawn is really really dangerous now the rook is pinned so cannot take uh, and now if rook takes on f8 we have the promotion of course uh, and if king on e7 rook f7 defending the pawn uh, king on e8 losing the bishop so uh, it's also losing so not this way this is why karyakin in this position uh, play rook on b3 it doesn't help however look at the position three pawns against three pawns okay two passed pawns against two passed pawns the bishops on the different colors squares so it looks like black actually can achieve something here uh, but look also how creative is daniel dubov bishop on d5 this is what he planned we have king on e8 and now rook f7 cutting the king and attacking the bishop so bishop has to be moved we have bishop on h6 rook on e7 now king on f8 rook on f7 king on e8 and now rook f6 attacking the bishop bishop g7 and now can you spot you know the winning continuation for white i think you can <laughs> i believe in you so bishop on c3 with check and look at this this pair of pawn and the bishop makes the wall and it cannot be crossed also the rook uh, also controls the f file so the only move is king on d8 and after rook on e6 sergey karyakin resigned the game and he resigned because checkmate is coming on e8 and nothing can be done just throw a couple of checks but it doesn't really matter as king can just hide so yeah that's all for this game and i would like to show you what happened today magnus carlsen as you see uh, won against wesley so in the game first which i covered uh, and you can actually check my channel also click the link if you want to see the game magnus carlsen sacrificed his queen uh, and won the game one against wesley so then wesley so had the chance to actually win in the second game he got the better position but magnus carlsen defended very very well wesley so didn't play uh, precise and he just lost and he was you know just upset and he just uh, just draw a uh, threefold repetition very very fast draw and uh, in game number three so Magnus Carlsen 1-0 uh, and uh, Daniel Dubov against Sergei Karyakin he won in game number one in game number two there were some some issues with connections but also Daniel Dubov had better position this was game number three uh, Sergei Karyakin tried to you know put uh, Daniel Dubov into a sleep but but Daniel Dubov was very very aware of the position and he counter attack in the right moment and he also uh, win the game uh, and here actually are the other games so uh, Hikaru Nakamura won against Levon Aronian this game actually I showed yesterday uh, and Yu Yang Yi against Ding Liren uh, in Armageddon game Ding Liren actually controlled the game but got flagged by Yu Yang Yi so as you see uh, Hikaru Nakamura, Magnus Carlsen, Yu Yangi and Daniel Dubov one point in their mini matches but Levon Aronian, Wesley So, Ding Liren and Sergei Karyakin still have chances to uh, to go to semi-finals the problem is he, they just have to uh, win two mini matches now each mini match contains four games and Armageddon game if needed so yeah if you like this video and this presentation press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other games uh, on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one